Hello and welcome to Veronica Hug. Today I'm going to show you how you can make a lovely purse for yourself and today I'm going to use a double crochet needle as you can see and the rope from Wooly Hugs. So I use this type of wool because I wanted this purse to be really stable and keep its shape which you can see here and yeah this way it doesn't fall over it doesn't tip over it basically just stands on its base so yeah this is a really robust type of yarn and i'm going to show you how you can work with it you're going to need the woolly hugs rope so this is 200 grams and 140 meters and it's 100 percent polyester and you can see this kind of clutch shaped purse that I used or that I made. And um, yeah, I'm gonna show you how you can do this. I have a little bit left over here, but I'll show you right now how big this was. So it was um, almost 24 centimeters in its width. And the height is, let's see, about 17, um, 18, actually 18 centimeters in its height. And yeah, for this clutch, I started on the bottom with 20 chains. Then um, the 20 chains we do from both sides, basically. So since we do them on both sides, we basically have 40. And then um, into the first chain, don't come just two stitches, but actually four of them. On the left side, we do the exact same thing. Um, which means we have four stitches more. So in its width, we actually have 44 stitches. And yeah, I'm going to show you how you can do this on a little bit smaller example, but I just wanted to show you the finished version and how big it was when I tried it out. So yeah, it's a really robust one. It keeps its shape and that's exactly what I wanted to show you today. So although we aren't really doing a base here, you can see that the yarn kind of works with you and keeps or makes a fake base here that kind of keeps its shape and keeps your bag upright. Of course, you can do this in different ways, but I wanted to make it as simple as possible while achieving the result that we want. So I'll show you on a smaller example and let me just get that. And yeah, of course, I almost forgot to mention the double hook. So today we are using the doubled one that's actually most commonly used for Tunisian crocheting, but you are going to need one that has a hook on both ends. So um, you can see here in mine, six millimeters on the one side and five on the other. And that way it fits perfectly with the size of the yarn and what the yarn actually recommends. Um, to be used and yeah you can use whatever you have at home but just make sure um, that you know what you need before you get started with the project this time we do want a doubled doubled hook so as I said this is gonna be a smaller version but let me find the beginning first I think I'm gonna do just eight chains and then I'm going to show you how you can do this. So for the clutch I started with 20 and this time we're going to do eight. Okay, eight, and then we do an extra stitch and into the first chain, we're gonna do two single crochets. Into the second, we're gonna do just one and we're gonna continue with just one single crochet per each stitch or per each chain that we just started with. The last one is also gonna get two single crochets. So the very first and the very last get two singles, the rest get just one. And then what we're going to do is go into the exact same chain that we just went through, through the other side, 
and that's where we're gonna do two more single crochets. And you may notice that I'm working with my beginning thread as well, so I'm kind of hiding it as I work so that I don't have to weave it in later. And now we're repeating the exact same step on the other side of each of the chains we just already did. And we're just doing one single per each chain and then the last one is also gonna get two. So I did eight chains to start with. We have 16 then, so two times two plus the two extra on each side, which is 20 total. I'm here at the very last one, the last chain, and here I'm gonna do two single crochets. And now I can get started with my pattern right away in this first stitch that I did. So in this case, I'm not doing slip stitches to close the round up because I'm working in spirals. And that way it's also gonna look nice and it makes everything a lot easier. So yeah, you can of course try it out differently if you prefer, but you can notice with the bigger one and I'll show you um, there aren't really any changes in rounds or anything like that because we're working in spirals. And I think that's a really big benefit from today's project. So I went through this first one, first stitch, I'm taking the thread with me and now I'm taking my doubled hook and I'm basically taking my other end and the thread with it through this loop. And here I'm gonna do a chain. And then we go through the next one, we take the thread through again. And we're again pulling the other end through and that way doing a stitch. And we're gonna keep repeating that. It's an interesting project, it's a little bit different. So take your time with the first couple of stitches, but you're gonna see, you're gonna get really fast in a matter of minutes. just so you have kind of an approximation. So I did the entire clutch in one evening. So even if you're a beginner, you're not gonna need a lot more time than I did because it's such a simple project, as long as you have the right tools. So the doubled hook. So in case you're one of those less patient crocheters, this is a perfect project for you. So this is pretty much all there is to it, but I do want to show you how you can do the ending of this round, just so, just so I make sure that everything is explained. And it doesn't really matter that the one side is smaller than the other um, regarding the hook, because you are twisting it all the time and kind of using both, so it's not going to make any difference. Okay, so there we go. Now we go here into the red, right side, sorry, into the right side of the stitch. And we're again continuing in the exact same manner with our next round.
So we're always going into the right side of the stitch and that's pretty much it. I'll show you here on the bigger one, I'm doing the exact same thing. So just make sure here I stopped, so I'm gonna do the chain that's missing here and then you can see here right from or right side of the stitch we go through and then we repeat repeat the exact same step again. The awesome thing about this project as well is that you don't need a round or a row that you end with because um, this one is so robust that you actually don't need anything extra here on top. It already looks good, um, stays the way it is, so keeps its shape and you can see the pattern from the outside and the inside. I think it looks lovely from both sides and you can see how much easier this can be simply because you don't have to think about um, another ending round, so to speak, or something that's going to make your edges look nice because this way they already look really nice. So now I'll continue in this manner until I reach one of the edges here and then I'm going to show you how you can finish it up. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You can see how simple this is and you're going to get results really, really quickly. So yeah, just continue wherever you are. Make sure you're at one of the sides. So left or right, it's completely, um, it doesn't matter. It's completely the same. And yeah you don't want to stop in the middle because you're going to be able to notice it a little bit more um, and we don't want that. So yeah, I'm going to get there and then I'm going to show you how you can do that. So you can um, just take your last one apart or you can actually um, do one extra one depending on how much yarn you have left over. So now I can take a look, I'm stopping here and I'm counting the exact same number of stitches on both sides and then I know that these four, that's my middle here, so in my case the four here and in my case I'm going to do just those to make a little bit of a handle or a fake handle on this, actually not a fake one, a real little small handle and yeah. I'm going to do that with um, a stitch I'm going to show you. So I'm doing one more because I think I took one too many apart. And then I'm just going to do um, five chains to skip the four metal ones. So let's do that. Okay, so we have the five chains and now we're just going to skip the two chains on the bottom here. And then we're continuing just like we did so far. So in this case um, it's too small to be a handle of course. What I forgot to mention you can do a bigger one for a handle or a smaller one for a button for example which is what I want to use it for and that way you can kind of have it um, closed off or closed up with a little button. So that's completely up to you. You can do a handle there, you can do a button, you don't have to do anything depending on what you want to use it for and how big you want to make it. So you work till you get to the edge, the side, 
I'll do this one last one and then I'm here. And you go through the next one. So something like a slip stitch. And then you basically just go through the next one and pull it backwards. So you can follow my lead with this one in case it sounds a little bit complicated. And that way you have kind of a nice clean edge finished um, section last stitch. And that way you're completely done and it looks neat from either side and it doesn't really show that you where you finished. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to shoot a thumbs up if you did. You can also let me know in the comment section what you think. And if you'd like to see more videos from me, feel free to click on the subscribe button and you can even click on the notification bell and that way you'll get notified every time I post something new. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.